Do you have problems with your health and think it might be tied in with vitamin B12 deficiency or excess, and you're looking to understand if you have the right amount of vitamin B12? More importantly, if your body and tissues are getting the right amount of vitamin B12. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at specifically this question, how you know and understand whether or not your body has the right amount of B12. We're going to look at a couple different ways to test for vitamin B12. Obviously, we have the serum vitamin B12 test, the homocysteine, methylmalonic acid, and even MCB blood test. All these tests help inform and triangulate and understand whether or not your body has sufficient levels. So we're going to look at all those tests and how they inform us on whether or not your body has the right amount of B12. As I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health but they're not made for any specific individual. So please read this video disclaimer before we jump into the video details. So how do you know if you have the right amount of B12? Well, vitamin B12 is super important for the human body, and there are a lot of different areas in the body where B12 works. So because it's so important in this video, what we're going to do is look at how you can tell when your body is actually deficient in B12. Or put another way, how you know if your body has the right amount or sufficient amount of vitamin B12. So what we're going to be covering here is more so the testing and analysis of vitamin B12 via blood work and not so much the symptom patterns and things like that that you might suspect when you have a vitamin B12 deficiency or insufficiency. So the simplest way to test for your B12 or understand what your B12 levels are in your body is to do a serum B12 test. So the serum test is a simple blood test that you get for just says vitamin B12 and it's a reliable indicator when your levels show out low. So Typically, a low level is going to be somewhere around 300 nanograms per deciliter, but even if it's less than 500, it may be suggesting that you have insufficient levels or your body actually does need more B12. And this is because sometimes B12 gets bound up in the blood or in the serum when it's floating around and it's not able to get into the cells or into the tissues where it's needed. And this can lead to a level that actually looks okay or looks normal, but the inside the cells, it's actually not in sufficient quantities. And there's actually studies looking at this showing that some people even have 700, 800 nanograms per deciliter, but their intracellular vitamin B12 is actually low. So what other tests can we use or rely on to give us an indication that we need more vitamin B12? Well, there's actually three different tests that I would look at, and one of them is called the MCV blood test. The other is called homocysteine. And then the last one, which we're going to spend the most amount of time on, is called methylmalonic acid. The first two, the MCB and homocysteine, I've spent a lot of time on in other videos. I'll just briefly mention them here. MCV stands for mean corpuscular volume, and it's basically the size of the red blood cells. And I discussed this in this video here. But the level of MCV does go up when you're deficient in either B12 or folate. Both of these nutrients are needed in some capacity in order to make DNA base pairs. When that happens, the cells get stuck in a larger phase and they're not able to divide efficiently through mitosis. When they're not able to divide efficiently, they get released earlier in this larger stage. When you do your CBC blood test, you'll see a high or high normal MCV level. Similarly, an elevated homocysteine can also be indicative of a deficiency or inadequacy of vitamin B12 or folate. And you can find more details on this kind of testing and elevated homocysteine in this video here. But what are you going to do when you want to know for sure if it's the B12 or the folate? Well, one option is to look at methylmalonic acid. Methylmalonic acid is derived from methylmalonyl-CoA and it's an intermediate in the breakdown of certain amino acids, as well as odd chain fatty acids. And basically this conversion is catalyzed by an enzyme called methylmalonyl-CoA mutase, often referred to as MUT. So this methylmalonic acid test is a more functional analysis of your B12 levels because vitamin B12 is essential for the proper functioning of this methylmalonyl-CoA mutase enzyme. B12 works as a cofactor for this enzyme, allowing the conversion of methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA. 
in the absence of adequate vitamin B12, in particular adenosyl B12, the MUT activity is impaired or slowed, leading to an accumulation of this methylmalonic acid. When that methylmalonic acid starts to get to critical levels, it can start to damage the nerves and lead to neurological symptoms, typically presenting with some kind of neuropathy in the feet or hands, usually in the lower extremities. So what many people don't know and understand, even sometimes doctors, is that methylmalonic acid levels can be high even when the serum B12 levels look normal or, or okay. And so because of this, the methylmalonic acid test is a much more reliable test, and we would rely on the elevated methylmalonic acid test telling us that you have more of a B12 deficiency or an inadequacy rather than the serum B12 test. Not everyone necessarily needs to run the methylmalonic acid test, but it can be helpful in cases where you really need to know if you're getting adequate B12, like when you do have some kind of neurological problem or something specific that seems to be coming from B12, but your serum B12 level looks normal. Other cases when you've been supplementing with vitamin B12 for years and you really think it's helping you, you like how it makes you feel, but you want to know if you're getting enough, this kind of test would be helpful to really distinguish that if your cells and tissues are getting sufficient levels. The other thing is methylmalonic acid is pretty reliable test, whether it's done in the blood or the urine, but the urine one is a little bit more accurate in terms of giving us the full spectrum of how high that methylmalonic acid level is. So if you have the option, the urine test is going to be much better. So in summary, if you're wondering if your body is getting sufficient levels of vitamin B12 and you can't really rely on your serum B12, the methylmalonic acid, or the homocysteine level, the methylmalonic acid test is a very good option to give you a clear indication, black and white, if you have sufficient levels of vitamin B12. So hopefully this helps you better understand and know if you have the right amount of B12. While methylmalonic acid is a very reliable indicator of vitamin B12 deficiency, there are other tests and aspects to consider in this situation. And in my book, Don't B12 Deficient, I take a deep dive into this topic as well as other pieces of the vitamin B12 puzzle. So it's a comprehensive guide and has practical strategies for not only maintaining optimal levels, but also looking into problems that arise from having too high vitamin B12 levels. So whether you're in a deficient or excess state, it can be helpful in guiding your health journey. So that's about all I had to discuss on this video and helping you understand whether or not your body has sufficient levels of vitamin B12. If you do have questions on anything in this video, feel free to drop them in the comment section. If you do want a more customized, usable answer, consider joining the membership program. With this program, I'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Either way, I'll try and answer your questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.